I will try to tell you about it. Uh, I got called out for an emergency that night and at 12.30. And uh, I uh, had been up until 12 o'clock because my father was having a birthday that next weekend. And uh, I made rye rolls and dinner rolls. And they weren't cool enough to put in the freezer yet. So I ate five of them while I was <laughs> waiting for them to get cool, which probably saved me from being too hungry all day. But I, they called me at 12.30 and I got in the, my little Ford and I went across the railroad track a little fast and killed the engine because there was water across the road. You know, we had had it had rained and the creek was out of banks and it was really a wet warm day before that just kind of like today it makes you think <laughs> and uh, so I got up there and we had the surgery and it took the patient to recovery and I said you know oh the girl said you know it's just starting to snow they said it was going to snow and it might be a big snow and I so when I went back and we started cleaning up I said well it just started snowing the girl said in ICU and Karen Hall was working with me and she says right now you go home you're not working tomorrow she said you go on home I'll clean up well I never went on home again because after that I stayed at her house. <laughs> she felt so bad that she had talked me into going on home. And I had no problem till I got to the light in Plain City and it was so pretty I had to stop for the red light. Stopped for the red light at 2.30 in the morning and Probably, if I wouldn't have stopped that 30 seconds, I might have got on my road. But I was between the two houses on on Plain City, Georgesville Road, before you turn on Converse Up. I was just between the two houses, and all of a sudden, I couldn't see. And I stopped. And then my car died. And if you looked at the pictures, you can see why my car died. The, the snow just was, was just solid snow up in the motor. So, I don't know. I just kind of sit there. I had the car that I started with. The en engine died, and so I ran up to the firehouse, and Kenny Renner was working. I said, can I use your car? i got to get to the hospital. And he said, no, I don't have any brakes. So I called home, and they brought me another car. And fortunately, that car that I started with was plastic seats. And I had cloth seats, at least, on the other car that they brought me. So that was better than plastic seats. And Burl used that car to go from one farm to the other, feeding the cattle. And so he had an old quilt that he put over the seat. So I did have that quilt. It was uh, about as thick as two sheets. <laughs> he had bought it in a box of rags for a quarter at some sale. So, but you just cannot imagine how cold you can be. I mean, I never quit moving. I kept going from the front seat to the back seat to keep circulation. And I had gloves, but I didn't put the fingers in them. I kept my hands like that in the gloves because it was better to have them all together. But the uh, I just felt 
that it was there was someone looking after you because I had drifts in the front seat and the back seat clear to the ceiling. If you notice the pictures, mm -hmm. there are uh, there were drifts in the front seat and the back seat, and when they opened the door, they didn't fall down because the my breathing made it turn to ice. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there in the back seat, and all of a sudden, something hit me in my head. You know, I hit something. I looked up there, and Every place there was any chrome, there were icicles hanging. Mm. From you wouldn't think from just one person breathing would be, do that, but it was uh, it was quite a quite a thing. And with, I guess at home they weren't too happy. Uh, Andy wasn't too happy because. Three days before, he had tried to buy a, a snowmobile, and Burl told him if he wanted to farm, that he couldn't be spending money like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Burl bought the snowmobile the next day. <laughs> but it really, uh, it's, it's amazing how when I first stopped, I opened the door and to see if I was still on the road because I was afraid, you know, I didn't want to get in. The, the creek was out of banks, so I didn't want to get in, but I was on the road. It shows in one of those pictures, I guess it's in there, that you can see the line of the car where they took it, pulled it out. But the car was, they pulled the car out, I don't know, about, I was thinking it was Sunday night. Do you know, Ann? You don't remember. I was thinking the car was out, but they didn't get our road cleared until Wednesday, and the storm was, Thursday morning early. Thursday morning. And I think it was Sunday Sunday night about the time they got the car out. But the it was you, you can't imagine how one person can get so cold. I mean, you know, but how it helps you to go, to move, to go from the front seat to the back seat. Really, what kept your circulation? How long were you? Fifteen hours. Fifteen hours. Who found you, Nathan? Um, Dave Miller. Okay. From uh, uh, it was Raymond Kaufman's son-in-law. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Raymond and Emma went to Florida, so the story goes from the kids. <laughs> and the kids, while they were gone, they bought a snowmobile <laughs> for the. He had the uh, Brock Bend business, and so the business bought a snowmobile. And Dad was really unhappy when he got home, and there was that snowmobile. But he, they said he never said much after they found me. <laughs> so, was your car completely covered with snow, Nikki? It was, it was not as bad. Uh, just you could see the top, yeah. and I had an antenna. But yeah, up around the doors and all the windows. Oh windows yeah, you. They broke a window to get me out. Oh wow. And. Uh, but, and you may have seen in those some snow on the driver's side. That was from the window being broke out. There was no snow. The halfway mark is where the snow quit. You think somebody isn't looking after you, really. It, it was really interesting. There was no snow on the driver's half of the and I never touched the snow. They said that would have made, you know, like if you'd 
want to get a little bit to eat, drink, eat or something. And they said that was a blessing that I hadn't touched it. Because. And Mom, tell them what you were wearing. Well, oh yeah. I was wearing a cotton dress. And I had boots. I had my snow boots on. And uh, no scarf. But I did have gloves, and I had a long Pendleton coat. Gosh, I should have worn it to die. So, uh, uh, but uh, uh, that cotton dress wasn't very warm. I just had a scrub dress on from surgery. And uh, did you know where you were? When, when you were in the car, did you realize how close to home you were? Did you know where you I were? I knew I was between the two houses. Okay. But I didn't know which house was the closest. But then I read this in Sunday's paper. 22 Ohioans died while walking from stranded cars. There have been 23 if I tried it. How did but, those guys know that you were in the car? The ones that found you, how did they know that? Uh, they knew they were looking for me. Oh, they were looking for you, okay. But they also knew that there was, I was not at any house between the hospital and home. The neighbors, the, they kept calling every neighbor okay. and uh, they knew I that I wasn't at any house. Wow. So, but it's, um, this picture, this front picture, what you see, just the very top, you don't know it's a car. This is what's taken the next morning. But these, where you just saw a little bit, that's what it looked like when they found me. They they uh, took a shovel and, and uh, got down. But then they couldn't get the doors open, so they broke the window. The insurance was good. They paid for the window. <laughs> that was really something. And Mom, tell them how they got you out of the car and then to our house. Oh, yes. They took me in uh, Raymond's tractor. He was closed tractor. And he took me almost to my house and then they couldn't go any farther because the dress were so bad. And then so he got out and Burl was on the, they had gone to get Burl on the snowmobile and each one of them put my arm around them and they drug me home oh, from oh, probably 50 or 100 feet before you get to our drive. And the snow was over the fence right there he should go in the house so it was I just think how Raymond did <laughs> Raymond and Andy Ray, Raymond and Burl so but they said it was didn't uh, Andy keep telling his dad he'd find me yes but then what did they tell you to do once we brought you home <laughs> Oh, yeah, they said, well, first they wanted me to have a steak. They wanted to know what I wanted to eat, and I said, I would like a cup of tea. <laughs> and then they, uh, Gingrich, oh, the Gingrich out here, I can't think of his name, by the railroad, and uh, he called to see how I was, and he said, well, we don't have electric. And I said, oh my gosh, I don't want to go without electric. I said, now I'd like to take a bath and warm up in the bathtub. So that's what I did soon after I got home. I said, well, I'll take a bath before the lights go out. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did they tell you to drink? Whiskey. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Carr told Andy. He was at the grocery when Andy went to buy groceries. For somebody needed milk for their kids and he was going to get milk and he said you get some Gatorade and take home to your mother she needs to drink some of that well 
I drank a little bit, but I wasn't that sick. <laughs> <laughs> but they wanted you to drink alcohol to warm her up. Oh, well, alcohol? I wasn't going to drink that either. I don't like <laughs> that. I know that that would be good for you. I know, Lord, and that's cool but that's you know, know your voice, <laughs> when you're real cold, your voice will quiver. It was that way for three days. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, uh, you know, it just didn't sound right. But I think that, uh, I know that the girls told me at the hospital they kept thinking that I would lose fingers or toes yeah, being in 20 degrees below zero that long. Mm. And I said, well, I, I kind of wanted to live, so I kept moving. <laughs> my shoes were, my boots were worn out. They were completely worn out if you just keep moving. Them. So. Had you ever, did you ever give up hope? or did No, you, you just, I didn't. There, when it started to get dark, I wrote some things on a check that I wanted <laughs> done. <laughs> but that was it. I mean, I, I, I tell you, if you would have seen that car, you can't imagine uh, drifts clear to the ceiling. How did the snow get into the car? Uh, Ann had drove the car and somebody hit her in Marysville the year before. And it was a hard top, you know, where the two glasses meet. And it was just probably not quite as good as it should have been. And uh, that was... The wind was terrible. Yeah. Forty years and you're still yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the first, <laughs> and first it went fill the front seat mm -hmm. and then this back seat. At noon the wind changed. But now since I didn't have a scarf or anything for my head, Anne had left two scarves in the car. Oh. One was a brown one, and I put it over the seat belt up there to keep it from coming over on me, and then it just kind of fell down. And the other one I put around my head and my shoulders. You know, those long ones with the fringe? Mm -hmm. It was convenient that she had two. <laughs> but uh, it really... Uh, don't ever let them tell you to put a blanket in your car, in your trunk. Yeah. They always say, be sure and carry a blanket in the winter time in your trunk, because you may need it. You don't want it in a trunk. You couldn't get to it. It has to be right up there with you, because you can't get out to get it. Did you ever fall asleep? No, I forced myself to stay awake. I slept all night the night I got home. <laughs> but uh, I, they kept saying, you know, that next week on Wednesday they called and they said, have you been to the doctor yet? And I said, how can you? They just are opening our road today. See, it was... It wouldn't happen Thursday, and our road didn't get open until Wednesday. So, how weak were you when you got out of the car finally? But how weak were you when you got out of the I, car? I wasn't really that weak. I don't think. Okay. I mean, they held on to me because it was awful going through the snow. But I, I really didn't think I was too weak. Did you, Ann? I thought they drug you on a blanket, some. Yeah, kind of half drug me. Yeah, on a, because they, they were a having a hard a time walking it, as well as. So the snow got so deep they couldn't. Okay. But uh, I never will forget. They wanted to warm me up, so girl put his insulated underwear in the dryer and warmed them up so I would have 
he put those on and no, they they fixed me up. I think they did more for me than ever. <laughs> before or since. <laughs> but in the uh, fire department, Roger and Lemoyne were looking and Kenny Renner, but they had all gone up seven thirty six. Yeah, the fire department was all looking up between town and Marysville. Um, my dad was on the department then. A lot of the volunteers couldn't get into the department, so there was a few of us, like Brent Smith and myself, those that were sons of fathers. We went out with some of the firefighters so they would have an extra person in one of the vehicles, and of course they all ended up getting stuck or abandoned. Kenny and I ended up on 736, and we couldn't get anywhere, so we walked back into Plain City from 736, left the fire truck setting. We couldn't. <laughs> It was stuck. We couldn't get it out any further. Mm -hmm. But we were searching all up through 736 trying to find her. Now, John Sigler lived up the Raymond Road in Marysville, and he oh. was on the case, too. And when he went home, he did made almost not too far from home, and he went in the ditch. So he held on to the fence all the way home. And, he, and then they had a fence going back to their house, and that's how he made it home. But his wife said when he got home, one side of his face was solid snow. But I was just too chicken to try to get out and walk. <laughs> I mean, good thing. Uh, there, were, there, might, there probably would have been 23. <laughs> Nikki? So. Back then, I remember that, you know, my sisters being in Texas and all, uh -huh. and I had told them about you, and they said that it was on the news down there. Oh, really? About wow. this mm -hmm. woman being lost and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Well, that. there was a girl south of sorry, London, okay. or near London, and uh, she, I guess she was in there too for quite a while. She took, said she took the hems out of her slacks to make them longer. Oh, well, I can't no, imagine doing that. But, <laughs> no. But it was. I really never got cold. Got hungry. Of course, I didn't have any use need to for quite a while after eating five rolls. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, this is the reason why, see, I ate those rolls to take care of the next day. <laughs> but, the, uh, I have this one picture. Now this one says the 78 blizzard, and these are 77. I didn't know what he... And this is the tractor. It was completely covered that we had to get out so we could plow our snow. I mean, it was... And the cattle that almost got up on the roof of the barn, there were just no fences. They, the snow was over the fences. And I had some other pictures here if anybody wants. A lot of these are the 77 blizzard that we took. And so, does anybody else have any questions? How did they discover you were missing? Uh, they called home about 3.30 and wanted to make sure I made it home. Oh, good. Oh. The hospital did. Yeah. Because uh, they, I guess Carolyn kept calling about John Ziegler and uh, she said, well, he isn't home yet, and it took him a long time to get home. But the girl I was with, she lived in Marysville, so she didn't have any trouble. Yeah. But, uh... Nikki? Gene Doherty, I was uh, in the guard at the time, and I had gone that next day, and they had said something about somebody in Marysville being missing, and... We tried to get to Marysville and wasn't able to yeah. in the National Guard. Yeah. So we did a lot of work right in Marysville at the time. 
around the hot. We did a lot of work for the hospital. Uh -huh. and we actually broke into the stores and stuff so we could get food into the people at that time. Yeah. And we did the best we could until we got out. Uh, was able to get out into the countryside in order to, you know, help some people. We had helicopter assistance and, and that type of thing. But some of those snow drifts on Route 4 and 37, 36, oh, yeah. they were close to 30 feet deep. Mm -hmm. oh, and I, myself, the next morning, having to go into Marysville from house here in Plain City, I had, it took me an hour or so to get out of my driveway before I could get yeah. going. Luckily, the snow was in, it drifted in different places and the road was clear in other places. Yeah. So I actually busted snow drifts all the way to Marysville. Mm -hmm. When I got there, my whole front end was tore up and <laughs> I had to walk the rest of the way into town. So yes. That was my well, problem. Well, I'll tell you, it was just that freak thing. Mm -hmm. And now I was never afraid to go again. And, you know, I drove to Marysville all those years, never had any trouble. One time, my brother-in-law from Florida was visiting. And what do you have, gout or something, and his big toe hurt. And Alice said at 3.30 in the morning, she said, he's just miserable, will you take him to the hospital? And I said, yeah. And it was snowing. No. And you couldn't see where the road was if you didn't. And he said, how do you know where you're going? And I said, well, you see the fence on each side? You just stay in the middle of that. And that <laughs> I knew the road, but he, I don't know whether he believed me or not. <laughs> I did. That was Alice's husband. Yeah. He's kind of weird guy, <laughs> well, especially when you had a toe and it was, and it was snowing as hard as it was that night. <laughs> so, but. I have a memory from that night. I was traveling, and I was going from Baltimore to Boston, and uh, we got to the airport at five o'clock, and this huge front was coming through because it already hit Ohio. And I got on the plane and they canceled the flight. I said, that's too bad, you know, to take off. And I looked at my flight guide and there's another airline that has a flight in 20 minutes. So I jump off the plane, I run to the nearest phone, make a reservation on it. So the next terminal, I run to the terminal and everybody that was on my flight is trying to get on that flight. <laughs> but before they take those people, they said, does anybody have a reservation? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so I got on that plane. It was the last plane that got out of Baltimore. Meanwhile, my wife's back. I was living in Mirrorfield at the time. My wife's at home, two little kids and a dog. And this huge storm hits. Well, I land in Boston and I happen to be staying at the Regency Hyatt house in Boston. And, you know, it's... You know, not too much of a hardship there. <laughs> what am I going to have for dinner tonight or whatever it might be? I had meetings right there. And this huge storm hits the Midwest. And my, I call home. And my wife's telling me how big the snow drifts are. Well, you always hear that. And she says, no, I'm really serious, Bob. It's really bad. So, and then they lost power. And one of their neighbors had a fireplace in their basement or something. They wound up taking my dog and the two kids and my wife, and they stayed in the basement there trying to stay warm. <laughs> Meanwhile, I can't get back to Columbus because you know everything was closed down, and everything flying west from the east coast was you know didn't have planes or they couldn't land any place. They fly over, so I had a hardship of living in the Regency <laughs> Hyatt house for a week. I mean, I had to go out and buy new underwear and oh. stuff. I mean, you get tired of steak, you know, and all this stuff. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm telling my wife to run out of milk and all this stuff. So what I would do, try to make a reservation, every time, you know, there's a, how many millions of people trying to get back home. So I call the airlines at night to make a reservation. Well, you get this, you get in line, so I just go to bed with the phone in my ear. And about 3 or 4 o'clock, someone would, would finally get to me and say, you know, can I help you? And, of course, it would wake me up, and I'd make a reservation for the next day. Well, of course, 
Columbus was still closed, so then the next night I had to repeat the same thing. I mean, this is hardship, right? <laughs> so finally, after six or seven days, I get on the first flight coming into Columbus. And, and so I'm happy to get there. And I realize I got a car that's parked in the parking lot. <laughs> and I go out there, and the snow was pretty much the size of, you know, they'd gone down the, the, the main line, but they couldn't do anything where the cars are parked. So that was all snow and stuff. And so I was able to find a cardboard box, and I, I was able to get myself out of it. And I remember getting into the expressway, and the expressway still had ice, like four or five inches foot. Oh, my God. On 270 coming around. I had to stop and get some milk and everything else. And, you know, I finally pulled into our driveway, and... And my wife is, for some reason, she's not really sympathetic with the problems <laughs> I've had for this week. You know, and, you know, in fact, she's a little hostile. I mean. <laughs> but we had a deck in the back of the house that was maybe seven, eight feet off the ground. And my dog ran out and jumped into this and disappeared. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know... And, he, and he's, you know, he was as surprised as anybody, you know. <laughs> and he's trying to get up, and I had to jump in there to rescue him out of the snow. <laughs> but as it turned out, I think what happened, and I, I wasn't there to see it, but the National Guard sent in a tank or something. They actually opened up our end of, of Dublin uh, so we, they could get you know, cars through there. But it, it was a historic proportions, and I... Sympathize for all you people there. <laughs> it was tough sometimes, you know. Whether I should, should have fillet tonight or you know, <laughs> sirloin. And did did you eat anything? I was thinking you didn't eat all the time. You were just talking. We were on the phone with people trying to tell. They kept asking us, like, where do you think she is? Well, my dad kept saying. We don't know if she's north of town or south of town. And the fire department was calling and people were trying to call. But if you remember back then, the phones you would pick up and you'd have to wait forever for a dial tone. Yeah. I mean, it was like crazy trying to get through. So I don't remember. I, I don't remember. I remember when it was getting much. dark and I kept thinking, oh boy. Because um, Dave Miller come to the house and told us that he had found the car. But I don't think he said anything about you because they used a scoop shovel to break the window. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether they came and got us before they broke your window yeah. or to get my I dad. I can't remember how that all went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I remember were the frozen shut. I yeah. mean, the doors were frozen Did shut. Did you know they were out there? Yes. Mm -hmm. The snowmobile went on top of the car, I think, and he then stopped. He heard the CV antenna. And he saw the antenna. Yeah, and he saw the antenna. Yeah, and then he saw the antenna. Stopped, I think. It was nice. I had blue car, but I had a white top. It was <laughs> 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 so, so, it's it's just amazing day. how, like the, how the snow never one on the other side of the car. I mean, you know, that somebody upstairs was taking care of that. Because I never touched any snow, or no snow ever got on me. So how many hours was it total? 15. 15? 15. 15 hours. How many hours, Mom? 15. 15 hours. Wow. About 15. I left the hospital at 2.30, I figured it was about a quarter to three, and I think they found me about 5.30 or 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. about 15 hours. So, that's Could you tell when it was daylight? Oh yes, it was very bright. It was very bright. Uh, I don't know whether the sun was shining or not, but the car was very bright. and. Uh, I could tell that it was day. Uh, I couldn't see out of all the windows, but I could see out of some of them. And when I used that de-icer, I used it on the back window to see if I could see anything. And I just squirted it just once, and 
uh, the fumes was too much for the car. Yeah. And all I saw was a light pole. <laughs> <laughs> there was a light pole right n near me. But other than that, you know. Nikki, I can't, I, I thank you so much for mm -hmm. sharing this. Anybody else have questions? Anything you, make sure you look at Nikki's pictures if you didn't, haven't been able to yeah, see Yeah, I've got some of, most of these are, uh, 76, 77. I don't know, but there, I may have some, but you can see there's, they're not near as good as 78 as <laughs> the snow. Well, I'm glad you're here to tell us the story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought I was too young to kick off that. That's right. Yeah. 48. That's right. Young chick. Optimistic. <laughs> Well, thanks. Uh, I want to remind you, we still have cookies and coffee. And thank you all for coming. Our next meeting is in February, the fourth Tuesday. At the bottom, it tells you when it is. 27th. 27th. And it'll be a surprise program. <laughs> Yay. Because we have no idea right now. <laughs> and there's one picture I wanted to show in, in the book. And you guys can decide who's in this picture. Which yeah, picture? It's in the right around. Because you all know this person. It's in the back, probably. Okay, so when you get a minute, if you guys would like to look at this picture and tell me who's in it, It's this picture. So you can all come up and you guys guess who's in this slide? picture on the, slide? on the snowmobile. And can you hold the uh, camera? Oh, I think oh. I saw that. Yeah. Is that the two Let little kids? See. If I know. No. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Don't say a word. I won't say, say a word. word. <laughs> yes. Look at it and tell me who it is. I haven't seen the book again. <laughs> Pass it around. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Did everybody get to sign in? And Roger Mullen Perkins. Uh -huh. We went up to Lake Erie. <laughs>